Hey, what's up you guys? So, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is getting a remake, and now, I'm gonna be honest with you, most remakes I really don't care about, but this one has definitely got my interest. A lot of the times for Nintendo, a remake to them means upscaling the textures a bit and calling it a day. But this, oh my goodness, this looks fantastic. And now this remake has a lot of people talking, really just because nobody expected it. And naturally it's got me curious, what led us up to this point? Cause Paper Mario, it's had a bit of an inconsistent reputation over the years. When it first came out, these games were an instant classic, it was nominated for awards, these games were fantastic. But then there were a few missteps in the franchise, a lot of weird decisions, a lot of wacky games, and it had a lot of fans upset. But it seems like recently, and thankfully, Paper Mario has been cleaning up his act a bit, and is becoming a bit more of a respectable game franchise once again. So with all that being said, I really want to talk about all this. I want to talk about all the Paper Mario games that ever came out, who made these games and why, and just how well they all did, because despite a lot of the controversies this franchise has had, it's got some pretty good sales numbers. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Before we can start talking about the games themselves, I want to talk about who made Paper Mario and why. Did you guys know Nintendo doesn't even make the Paper Mario games? Honestly, a lot of you guys probably know that, I'm just late to the party. But yeah, every Paper Mario game, I think every Paper Mario game, was made by a different game company called Intelligent Systems. Now the game company Intelligent Systems is their own rabbit hole worth looking into. To my surprise, this game company is also responsible for the Fire Emblem franchise, and I'm pretty sure they made the WarriorWare franchise too. And if you look at their release dates over the years, Intelligent Systems has actually made a lot of games for Nintendo, it's wild. And their relationship goes way back, apparently they started working together all the way back in the days of the NES. So yeah, Nintendo just gives Intelligent Systems the right to use the Mario name, but all the games are made completely by Intelligent Systems. So that's the who behind Paper Mario, but now why? Why did they make Paper Mario? Well, because it wasn't even supposed to be Paper Mario. When it was first getting worked on, it was supposed to be the sequel to Super Mario RPG. Apparently something happened during the game's development, so they just decided to keep it a standalone title and they called it Mario Story in Japan. But here in America, we got the first ever Paper Mario. So the very first Paper Mario game would be released on the Nintendo 64 and it would come out in 2001 and immediately upon its release it got great reception a lot of people were into it it got pretty decent sales and i think it was even nominated for a few awards it got a 93 score out of 100 which is very good and it would go on to sell 1.3 million copies not crazy but not a flop either so that's great now i played this one and yeah i think this game is fantastic so next is the boy we're talking about today the original release of paper mario the thousand year door Originally released on the GameCube in 2004, it would go on to sell 1.3 million copies, again. It wasn't perceived as well, it was getting an 87 out of 100. And while I do think I like the Nintendo 64 one a little bit more, this one is also a very solid title. And it's definitely longer than the first one too, this game is enormous. Lots of gameplay, lots of really good gameplay, like, I gotta say, the difficulty in Thousand Year Door feels perfect. If you're teetering on the fence whether or not you should buy this remake, I think you should definitely buy it. This is where the series gets a little bit controversial. The next title in the franchise would be Super Paper Mario for the Wii, and that would be released in 2007. So the reason this is a little bit controversial is because the first two Paper Mario games, they were more of a turn-based RPG. But in Super Paper Mario, they completely dropped the turn-based combat, and the gameplay was like a cross between the original Mario formula and some RPG stuff. Me personally, you guys might not like this, but I'm on the fence of I don't really like it because they dropped turn-based combat. I know a lot of people don't like that opinion, but I don't know man, I just really liked the turn-based combat in the first two. I didn't really like the way the new game handled, and on top of that, it felt like the art style went a little bit too simplistic for this one. But now, how well did it sell? Honestly, to my surprise, this is the best-selling Paper Mario game in the whole franchise. Super Paper Mario sold 4.3 million copies. But now this is the fascinating part, it didn't get that good of a score, it only got like an 85 out of 100, which isn't too bad, but the first two games got way better scores, so what's going on here? Well, it's the same thing we've talked about in a lot of videos at this point, if a game gets released on a console that's not gonna sell well, the game itself isn't gonna sell well. And Super Paper Mario, it was released for the Nintendo Wii, and the Wii went to go sell, uh, I don't know, like a hundred million copies? So it makes enough sense why this one is the best-selling one in the whole franchise. The first Paper Mario released on the Nintendo 64, and I think that sold, what, like 35 million copies? Thousand Year Door came out on the GameCube, which only sold 21 million copies. So again, it has nothing to do with the quality of the game. The first two got better scores. I think it was just because Super Paper Mario was released on the Wii, it sold like twice the amount of copies. 
And supporting that theory, coming in at number 4, is Paper Mario Sticker Star, released in 2012. This one would only get a score of 75 out of 100, getting lower and lower, but this one still sold better than the first two. It sold 2.47 million copies, almost 2.5 million copies. What console was this released on? Well, it was released on the 3DS. The 3DS sold 75 million copies. The 3DS sold more than the GameCube and the Nintendo 64 combined. So yeah, it got way lower scores than the first two games, but it still got way higher sales, and I think that's why. Now what do I think? I love Paper Mario Sticker Star, but a lot of people did not like this one for a lot of reasons. So firstly, they dropped the whole buddy system they used to have in the first two games. So I remember Nintendo making like a big deal. They were like, look, we brought back turn-based combat, right? That's what you guys wanted. And they thought that was enough, but that really wasn't. A lot of people were upset that they didn't bring back like the partner system they had in the first two. You see, in the first two Paper Mario games, it was usually normal to get a new partner in every single world. They all had different abilities. They added a lot of fun to the game, but in Sticker Star, you didn't have any of that, and people were not liking it. I also heard the argument that there's no, like, traditional RPG elements, the way you level up and, like, get more HP and stuff isn't normal, and that quickly led to the argument that combat in this game was irrelevant, because you don't level up, so what's the point? Now, honestly, I think Sticker Star is a good game, and I don't believe in that theory that combat is a waste of time, because a lot of the times when you do combat, you not only get money, but you also get more powerful stickers to use, and honestly, it's just more practice, you get the timing down a bit more you get to experiment with the thing stickers do. I don't know, I've played Sticker Star a couple of times and I never really felt that uh, combat was a waste of time, but I will agree, it was a bummer that they dropped the buddy system, that was a cool part of the first two games. Lastly, I gotta add this, a lot of people who played this game could agree, there's a lot of times you're just not gonna know what to do in this game. For whatever reason, in Paper Mario Sticker Star, there's gonna be a lot of times where you just don't know what to do, and I don't know why it's structured like this, this game is very confusing and vague. There's gonna be a lot of times where you get stuck in a level and the game expects you to leave and go to a completely different level, sometimes go to a completely different world, and get this very specific item to advance. I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but for those who have played Sticker Star, they know what I'm talking about. It's a fun game, if you like Paper Mario, I definitely recommend you play this one. It's definitely not as bad as a lot of people want to make it out to be. So the next game we got, it's not a traditional Paper Mario game, but I definitely still have to count it, and that's Paper Mario, Mario Luigi Paper Jam. I don't know, whatever that title was called. This game was released in 2015, it was released on the 3DS, and it would go on to sell a million copies. I was kind of surprised by that, because I remember this one not getting very good reception. Me personally, I had no interest in this game, and I have never played it. And you know what? It has nothing to do with the Paper Mario aspect of it, it's more so the Mario and Luigi side of it. I remember I played Dream Team, and I couldn't stand that game. It left me feeling burned. So after I played Dream Team, when I saw this game, I was just like, no, nah, -uh, this is not happening. So I have no idea how good the game actually turned out. Out, definitely let me know down in the comments. I want to know if it's like a good Paper Mario game. And I was surprised this game sold as well as it did. I also remember hearing when it came out that this game was a little buggy. It was a little wonky, it was really easy to break the game. I don't know how true that is, but I definitely remember hearing that a decent bit. Now after the little side adventure that was Paper Jam, the next official Paper Mario game to get released was Color Splash in 2016. And now this game was very divisive. This would go on to be the worst selling Paper Mario game in the whole franchise. This game sold under a million copies, I think it sold like 800,000 copies maybe. And this could be attributed to a lot of factors. Probably the most obvious was that it was released on the Wii U. As we've discussed before, the Wii U has sold horribly. I I think it sold 13 million units. So yeah, already it doesn't have a very large fan base of people who can buy it. But on top of that, this game looked very boring. I remember when I first saw this, I was just like, yeah, I'm not interested. I already don't have a Wii U and I'm not buying it just for that. It just looked like a really watered down amalgamation of all the Paper Mario games that came before it. Very simple, still no partner system. I also heard from people who played this game that the combat system in this one was horrendous. So now, I've never played this game. I don't know if Color Splash is actually a good Paper Mario game or not. I guess you'll have to make a case for it if you like it. But the perception of this game was not very good when it came out. And the sales numbers definitely reflect that. Oh, the game also only got a score of like 76 out of 100. So yeah, Color Splash was liked by people just as much as Sticker Star. And this is what I mean, Paper Mario has had a very complicated reputation. When it first came out, the first two games, people loved these games. And now Super Paper Mario for the Wii, it was a little controversial, but it still had its fans. It still sold amazing. But after that, Paper Mario started going into 
a bit of a downward spiral. Sticker Star kind of rubbed people the wrong way. Paper Jam was just very confusing. And Color Splash was kind of the last nail in the coffin. I'm gonna be honest with you, I wouldn't be surprised if we never saw Paper Mario again after Color Splash. But thankfully, after laying low for a few years, Paper Mario would make a return, in a big way. In 2020, Paper Mario The Origami King got released. And this game had a lot of people talking. Not only did the game look very beautiful, this game got released on the Switch, so, you know, a lot of people bought the Switch, it had a chance at selling big. But the big thing Nintendo was doing was they were subtly hinting at the idea that they brought partners back. Now this, from what I understand, was kind of a myth. They didn't really bring partners back. If they did, I don't think they ever stayed past the chapter they were in. Now I never played the Origami King. Honestly, I wasn't that interested in it. I liked the Origami aesthetic and I heard the story in this game was pretty decent. Let me know if Origami King is actually worth playing, because I've also heard very mixed reviews about its battle system. But regardless about what any of us think, it's sold very well. The Origami King so far has sold 3.3 million copies. And it got pretty decent ratings too, it got an 80 out of 100. So while Origami King wasn't the grand slam we all wanted it to be, it was definitely a step in the right direction. And after Origami King, that brings us here. In 2023, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake got announced. And how is it looking? What do we think? Honestly dude, this looks fantastic. I'm definitely gonna buy it. Um, I really hope it's not 60. I don't think it should be 60. It definitely should be a $50 game. If it is 60, I'm still gonna buy it, but I'm gonna be salty about it. Lastly, before we close out the video, I just want to talk about one more Paper Mario thing. Did you guys know Bobbery from Thousand Year Door was actually supposed to have a completely different design? This looks freaky. Yeah, I was stumbling around on the modelresource.com. They have a lot of unused models for all the original characters in the game, and honestly, they all look kind of the same, but it's just Bobbery that looks totally different. And yeah, I'm glad he got a redesign. He definitely fits the aesthetic of Thousand Year Door way more. It looks way too militaristic and scary in the unused model. I just thought that was interesting, wanted to get that out there. So, with that being said, I think that is the full story of the Paper Mario franchise. How it started and where it's at right now. Uh, if I had to pick a favorite, I think it might just be the Nintendo 64 one. For no specific reason, I don't know, I just really like that one. But still, definitely happy Thousand Year Door is getting a remake, that's awesome. If Sticker Star got a remake, I would totally buy that, that would be sweet. I kind of doubt it, but it would be sweet. Alright, that's pretty much that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Displayland's been growing a lot, and I really appreciate that, you guys. Thanks a ton, and I have plenty more video game videos coming out soon. Hope you like them.